Is this good or bad news for U.S. soccer? You know, all things considered, I don't think it's positive news. Now, he leaves U.S. soccer. The timing is strange, but apparently this decision was already taken. He wants to be closer to his family, mm -hmm. uh, which is in Holland. Uh, PSV is a massive job. Let's mm -hmm. not compare the two because I don't think there is a comparison. Uh, I think that's a bigger job, if you will. Now, I know people want to blow up the establishment. They, they want to just burn everything down. Mm -hmm. But Ernie Stewart, you could question why he was taking phone calls from the mother of a player. Yep. But all things considered... I did, I did question that. That no, is correct. No, and, I, and yes. I, was, I was one of them as well, right? But we don't know exactly the extent of that. All we know is that he found out sensitive information and he ran it up the ladder. Proper protocol. That's what we do know. We don't know if he was constantly in contact with Daniel Reyna. All we know is he was contacted by Daniel Reyna, found out this sensitive information, ran it up the ladder, proper protocol, and here we are today. Essentially, he did his job, right? He didn't hide anything from anybody. He did his job. Not having Ernie Stewart in this position now, it just sets the U.S. men's national team back. It sets, hmm. honestly, the search for a coach back because you have to fulfill that role, Ernie Stewart's role, right now hmm. before you could even get to a coach. You can't hire a coach hmm. and then hire Ernie Stewart's successor. That's not how it works. So now you're going to have to wait for the person who comes in after Ernie Whichever that person is, they will then go on a coaching search. If you thought it was bad enough having to wait 13 months for Greg Berhalter to coach the Columbus crew before the U.S. men's national team got up and going, this is going to be so much more stressful. Because yeah. by the time they get this person in charge, certain coaches that may be actual candidates could be gone. I don't know that I see it as such a bad thing for the U.S. men's national team. I just said team, it wasn't right? a positive. Okay, not a positive. I do see some positives here. The negatives are clear, right? There's not an organization in the world that, what, just over three years now from the biggest World Cup in its history, and this time I think it's fair to actually say that, would want to have no, no head coach, no GM, and no sporting director. That's not ideal. Nobody would draw up that plan. Right. That said, to your point, Ernie Stewart did take the call. He was part of the scandal that is melting right. down U.S. soccer Correct. right now. On top of that, he was part of the hiring process that landed Greg Berhalter in the job, something you criticized quite a bit. Was okay? he? Okay. Yes. Yeah, Greg he joins the fit. Yes. Yes. You sure yes. Greg wasn't there before Ernie? Yes, I'm sure. Her. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure. So Ernie Stewart is part of the process that lands us with Greg Berhalter. Do you have confidence that Ernie Stewart would have landed anybody else? Because remember that process, Herc. Who, who did we end up getting? Greg Berhalter and an Oscar Pareja maybe interview? Right. Like, like it's not like Ernie Stewart had some incredible Rolodex or, or incredible network of context that, that, he could, that he could plug into to get somebody amazing in that job. The, the big point here, Herc, is who are you going to hire to be the next head coach right. of the U.S. men's national team? And I think there probably is somebody out there that U.S. soccer could hire who would have a better list of candidates than Ernie Stewart. Okay. You don't agree? Okay, who? I'm not saying that's not the case. Mm -hmm. If that person is out there, yeah, bring sure, him on. Right? We're, but that's, yeah. that's the thing right now. If you look... Now, I would love to get away from this U.S. soccer bubble. Okay? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems that U.S. soccer had was a majority of these figureheads being from the same era. Mm -hmm. One of the craziest eras in American football. Uh, dysfunctional, if you will. U.S. soccer isn't a world beater. U.S. Mm -hmm. soccer isn't amongst the best in the world. I don't know if they have the funds to go out and get some that are amongst the best in the world. But if you can, would you yes. not? Yes, of course. Give me a name. Who are you thinking? Who's a sporting director that's number one in the world? I'll throw, if, you can pay, if you can pay enough money to stop championing FIFA's stupid ideas, Arsene Wenger would be a great name. Ooh. How about that, Beto, producer Beto, Arsenal fan? 
Oh. How about Dennis Teclose? How about, how about a I more love, realistic name? I love Dennis, Dennis Teclose. Teclose. I love Worked the, youth national teams with Mexico. Love the name. Knows Major League love Soccer with idea. LA Galaxy. Has European contacts. He would have to get clearance from, I would think, the Federation right now or Major League Soccer was tied into the Federation because there's still that mm -hmm. investigation. Well, I, don't even, I think it's concluded with uh, Chris Klein and whatnot. But he's a name that I completely love and I think would be good because he knows lots of market would handle certain, tick mm -hmm. a lot of boxes, right? Check a lot of boxes. Uh, Recruitment, which you think is a big, big thing right now in U.S. soccer, I think he would check that box. Uh, a Rolodex of international figures, he would check that box. An understanding of the makeup of U.S. soccer, he would check that box. An understanding of their rival, he would check that box. I love that name, mm -hmm. but I don't think you have to limit yourself into a name that's regional. Because you know, he's with Feyenoord right now, but I really think U.S. soccer is an attractive enough job where you can get some of the biggest figureheads in the world. All right, real quick. Stewart's gone. McBride's gone. Berhalter's out of contract, but Cindy Parlo Cohn says he's still a candidate. It's over for Berhalter, right? There's no way he's coming back with Stewart gone. His allies are all are all gone. Yeah, man. You know, you keep asking me this, and I know why, because uh, the producer keeps putting it in the rundown. But I no, because Cindy Parlo Cohn keeps saying I, he's a candidate. Everybody keeps saying he's yelling at me right now. I because everybody keeps bringing him up. I've said every single time we've spoken about Greg Berhalter, he wasn't my choice and he wasn't going to be there for sporting reasons. I didn't think mm -hmm. he was good enough to lead this team or I don't feel he's good enough to lead this team in 2026. Mm -hmm. You add everything that's happened since the World Cup. In the World Cup, the way he handled it, the symposium, uh, with the news getting out, being leaked, leaked, mm -hmm. and the fallout till now, I don't see how he survives this. It's a PR nightmare. I don't think U.S. soccer would take this on. It would be crazy to take this on. I, I just don't see any possible way of him maintaining that job. I think there's a reason why Cindy Parlo Cohn keeps saying he's a candidate. Don't it's because she has to say yeah. that until the investigation is complete. We're told, ESPN has been told, that that investigation should wrap up in the next week or two. We'll keep an eye on what comes of that. Ernie Stewart to PSV. Maybe that'll be a, a good landing stop, spot. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.